Welcome to Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. Your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Now you're wondering, why am I showing you Bill Murray from Groundhog Day? It's nowhere close to February, but the weather has been like this for many of you here for, well, quite a while. And I've been talking about the same thing for quite a while. So this is another situation where the weather is just going to be repeating itself. And it's almost like Groundhog Day, the movie. Everything is the same each and every day. And that's how things are going to go on on this Wednesday. It's basically the same setup. That means we've got a heavy rain threat, especially Wyoming, parts of all of Nebraska, really. And there are sections of Colorado, Idaho, and Utah that could see some very heavy downpours, possible flooding. For two days in a row, there have been pockets of very heavy rain and flash flooding. It all depends on where you are, but many areas of Wyoming and Colorado, Nebraska, seeing some pockets of very heavy rain in this monsoon-driven pattern. But as we talked about last week, this is the time of year when you get this, when this does happen at times. Not every year, but frequently, late July, early August, you'll get these deep plumes of subtropical air. Now, there's going to be a northward shift in this monsoon coming, and this doesn't always happen, but we're going to see central northern Wyoming, parts of Montana's southern areas, then going east into western areas of the Dakotas, especially South Dakota, where we're going to see sort of that flooding risk move north late this week and into the start of the upcoming weekend. So folks, we'll show you where those areas will be as there is a little bit of a change in the weather finally coming late this week and this weekend. And part of that is going to be a cooling trend. Yeah, we're talking about here in August, temperatures going below average for a good chunk of the central and northern Rockies this weekend and into early next week, really beginning before this week is over. You'll be looking at some days only reaching the 70s. Also, as we get to the other half of our podcast this morning, we're going to talk about the need for more rain gauge volunteers, precipitation volunteers, part of the Coco Ross program, and this recent spout of very heavy rain, so important in terms of getting a good measure of where the rain has fallen, especially in the rural areas. And some photos coming in yesterday. Lots of pea-sized hail. Didn't get too big, luckily, across southeastern Wyoming, but big heavy downpours, some localized flooding in the Cheyenne area from these monsoon-driven thunderstorms. This was after an inch of rain in Gordon, Nebraska. Look at all that green still going on here in the month of August. Now, this is a great photo taken northwest of Cheyenne near Iron Mountain of the thunderstorm that went through parts of southeastern Wyoming and namely the Cheyenne area that dropped in some areas well over an inch of rain in a very, very short period of time. That is the rain shaft that you are seeing there. And notice the little bit of a curve here at the tail end. That's why a lot of times it'll still be raining when the sun's out. You'll get that little tail in these very heavy rain shafts like this. But you can see the amount of water just coming out of that cloud. Just a tremendous amount of water. And we have other photos like this. This was actually from this weekend. Great lightning shot there in Hoagland, Montana. And then this is another rain shaft like I just showed you. But this is west of Wheatland near Squaw Mountain. That dropped 1.36 inches of rain in only 45 minutes. Hence the concern for flash flooding. Here we are with the high this morning where it was yesterday, moving its way into East Texas, making those folks sizzle and hot, hot and humid in that area there. But that subtropical moisture just continues to roll around. And here's Groundhog Day again, because this is a different satellite photo. It's not the same one I showed you yesterday. You can see the area of thunderstorms continuing, nocturnal thunderstorms across Nebraska, Iowa, and into Missouri and western Illinois this morning. And we'll see this develop again here over the next 24 hours. Drier air now punching into Arizona. We'll talk about this here in a minute. We're actually going to see very little thunderstorm activity in the desert southwest with this northward shift in the subtropical plume. And here it is. This is the axis of the deeper moisture today very similar to where it was yesterday. But as we step forward in time, you'll see how it shifts north. This is going to allow drier air to get punched in here into the desert states. And you can see the blue here. You are talking about twice as much normal water in the air as normally on this day. 
So any thunderstorms that develop are going to be gully washers, have that heavy rain content. And here you can see on the satellite imagery this morning, you can see where that axis is and it's not getting pushed anywhere out anytime soon. We have flood watches in effect again for southeastern Wyoming. We currently don't have any flood watches in effect for Colorado right now, but uh, or Nebraska, but that could change depending on what happens this afternoon. But that southeast corner of Wyoming, again, very susceptible to flash flooding. But I want to tell you, as I told you yesterday, you don't have to be green on this map to get heavy rain. Everybody is in the mix. This is the precipitation forecast through Friday, 6 p.m. So look at Nebraska there, but also look at the heavier moisture here in western Wyoming. Jackson and Pinedale into Evanston. Then that also goes down into the Wasatch, northern Wasatch Front and then curves up along the I-90 corridor up here. This is that northward shift we're going to be talking about. So the moisture pattern today is about where it's been, but tomorrow it begins to lift northward. So this is where the thunderstorm pattern will be. The darker green areas where the risk for severe weather will be. I'm afraid that tomorrow there's going to be an enhanced risk of severe weather. This is where you start talking about the risk of hail again, large hail, strong winds, possibly tornadoes, especially in that yellow area. And this is for Friday, more of a general thunderstorm pattern. But as we step through time, this is where the axis of the deep moisture will be Thursday. Notice the drier air coming into Arizona and the Four Corners area. So very little activity there. All the action gonna be up here in the dark green and blue areas. So this is tomorrow, this is Friday, this is Saturday, and then that's Sunday. So it starts to kind of break up a little bit so you can see that northward shift. So Friday, if you look at Thursday, another heavy day of thunderstorms. Friday, that concentration is up along I-90 there. So we'll need to watch Yellowstone. We'll need to watch Billings, Sheridan, Buffalo, Gillette, Bighorn Basin, Pinedale, Casper, then over into Rapid City. You're going to see that very heavy rain threat that's been more south along I-25 and I-80 shifting more northward. And then it sort of disperses a little bit. Look at the dry punch coming into the desert southwest. So that's just basically going to turn off the thunderstorms, at least any significant thunderstorm activity there for a while before we see that next plume that will try to work its way up a little bit later on. And that's as we get into Sunday. It's still there. Now, what's interesting, by noon Sunday, look where the high is. It hightails back to the west, back to southern Arizona. But we are starting to see a pretty good shift south of the jet stream here. This is going to be taking place by this weekend. So this is the cooling trend. We actually see that high pressure ridge get beat down a little bit by cool fronts coming out of the eastern Pacific, west of British Columbia. Now, does that seem like something you'd see in early August? Well, not very often. Late August, yes. So this is maybe a little ahead of schedule to where we get these August cold fronts. A late August cold front into early September is, is something you expect, but this is the jet stream getting a little bit more active here in the northern latitude. So what's going to happen is these are the temperature anomalies for Friday. So this is noon Friday. So you can see the cold air spreading. This is Saturday. This is Sunday. And that's Monday. So cooler air gets draped across the central and northern Rockies. Temperatures really cool off and even look at it into the Midwest here. And then pushing even into Oklahoma, Arkansas, a cooling trend after a lot of heat there. The heat with the high will get bottled up into Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California again, while below average temperature hit the nation's midsection. Yes, what I'm showing you there is over the next 10 days, the possibility of snow over the higher peaks of Wyoming and the Uintas of Utah. Does that mean it's going to snow? But the model sees it cold enough, at least at a mountaintop level, for a few flakes of snow in this cooling trend coming this weekend and early next week. Don't worry, I'm not talking about snow on the plains in August. This is just interesting. And, and if we were to take a more, more global perspective over the next 10 days, yep, yeah, it's starting to snow. Look at Greenland here, up over the North Pole, over northeastern areas of Siberia, then back over the high plateau areas of Asia here. It's cold enough that snow's starting to show up on our weather charts. I know it's, it's, early, it's only August 2nd. I'm not trying to depress anybody, but I want to keep you informed that uh, you start watching the higher latitudes this time of year for changes that give you hints for the fall season, something we'll continue to keep an eye on. Now, briefly, I want to talk about 
Coco Ross volunteers. Now this happens across the entire country. We're gonna focus a little bit on Wyoming and tell you how important, we've told you how important this volunteer rain gauge network is to being able to get a good idea of how much precipitation has fallen. And this is critical in terms of planning for water, planning for drought. In fact, it's just as important in drought as it is in rainy periods like we're having right now to have accurate measurements of rain that are just not in the cities or just not at airports, but in all locations. And you can see this is from a report yesterday of rain gauge reports across Wyoming. And you can see there's areas where there's a lot of reports, there's areas where there are a few reports, and there's a lot of gaps where there aren't any reports at all. So you go to cocoross.org, sign up to become an observer if you're interested. Now in Wyoming, this is where we need some volunteers. Carbon County, so Rollins, Saratoga, Encampment, Bags folks, Elk Mountain, Medicine Bow, uh, anywhere in Carbon County you are, especially in rural locations, sign up and be a volunteer. Sublet County, you Pinedale folks, around Daniel, Bondurant. If you have a chance to be a volunteer, sign up. Southern Lincoln County as well, over in that Kemmer area. If you would like to sign up, we need you. Rural Natrona County as well. We'll take uh, volunteers anywhere, but these are the areas where we've got some gaps to fill. But no matter where you are, and again, if you're watching this in another state, Nebraska, Colorado, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, Arizona, doesn't matter where you are, this is a nationwide network. And if you have the time, it's great fun to be a part of reporting these precipitation amounts, whether it's rain or whether it's snow. And it really, really is helpful in getting an understanding of how much rain has fallen or how much rain has not fallen. So sign up, you wanna go to Coco Ross, and uh, let me go back and show you that website right here, C-O-C-O-R-A-H-S dot O-R-G. And uh, also, uh, my good friend Ty has developed a very impressive rain gauge. Uh, if you want the most accurate rain gauge in the world, this Tropo rain gauge, it's brand new, just hit the market here earlier this year. It is going to give you the most accurate rainfall totals that you're gonna get anywhere. It even has a way to keep the birds off your rain gauge because you know what birds do when they sit on things. That's a great way to get rid of that happening. And a lot of folks with rain gauges out there know exactly what I'm talking about. But check this out, go to climatic.com for more information on that really special, very highly accurate four inch rain gauge. Have yourself a very good Wednesday. Good luck with the thunderstorms today.